Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy, I'm out here living life, I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. Thank you all for the very warm reception as we uh, came back into this potting landscape. Um, the, the, the love and the feedback has been great for the most part. I'm, I'm going to get to that later. Um, but of course, I am Armand Sadler, vegan chorizo poppy, uh, founder of BNB, the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. And of course, the nickname that I forgot that I was given by my brother YP, Chinedu. <laughs> so I am Chinedu. Um, I, I, I wear it proudly. I love it. I, I was actually listening back to that episode over the weekend. I was like, damn, I, I need to add this to my moniker. So Chinedu. <laughs> Um, but of course, I'm not here alone. My incredible co-hosts who are here now, um, who've been getting a lot of love themselves. Mr. B's, what's up? How you feeling? I'm good. How you doing? Good. 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 Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all you got for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good. You know, it's been a long weekend. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a little closer to the 30 range than yeah. I am to 20. So yeah. going outside two days back to back, got yeah. your girl feeling real mellow. But, you know, I'm here feeling good. <laughs> Happy to be back with the gang. I love yeah. that. Will, what's up, man? How you feeling? I'm feeling, I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling the same way <laughs> as her, actually. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I will tell you guys, the closer you get to, uh, which can't, I'm looking at the, okay, yeah. the closer you get to 30, once you pass 30, get you get, getting close, getting, whenever you pass, whatever, it just gets a little bit, a little bit harder, but not that much harder. Not that much harder if you're taking care of yourself, or, you know, and you're doing your thing. It just gets a little bit harder just getting back in the swing of things because you next thing, next thing you know, it's, it, it's a Monday. And next thing you know, we're, Right back in this thing, so yeah. answering emails, answering emails, <laughs> doing this and that, yeah, you know, leading so. meetings. I'm yeah. like, damn, I accidentally became important at work, and right, you act. I had a that's long one thing. Weekend. Like, oh my god, I'm actually good at my job, so I yeah. actually gotta like do this stuff. Yeah, yeah. but so, we here, we are here, absolutely. Stay we're busy. Here. Back again, staying busy for season five. Uh, shout out to all our new listeners, returning listeners. Um, Listeners who are considering leaving, don't leave. There's, there's, there's no reason for you to leave. I also want to give a shout out to uh, the people who are listening from jail. Um, sh- shout out to y'all for giving yes. giving us your free time. It means a lot. Real um, shit. You shout know, out we, to y'all. We, 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 we out here transcending. Free, free the real. Free the real. Free the Until it's backwards. Free the real. Absolutely. Gangster. Feel um, yeah. But make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for all visual episodes, YouTube shorts. Um, like, comment, share with a friend, of course. Uh, there's also the audio available on all your favorite streaming platforms, and you can leave a like, a rating, all that good stuff. Follow us there. Uh, of course, the Patreon, patreon.com backslash stay busy pod for all exclusive content. There is the very long uh, but <laughs> enjoyable breakdown of the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef that me and Miss Two Bs did um, available for you all to listen to right now. So jump Check in, leave a comment, talk to us. <laughs> Um, Wednesday is now our new release day, as I'm sure you all saw. We are no longer a Monday pod. Wednesday is now hitting you with the hitting you with the music on Hump Day. Pause. Um, <laughs> so enjoy that. Get get used to that. You know we we will be consistent with that. Um, I also have an event coming up June 18th with Samsung. I will be uh, doing a live conversation with Duran Bernard, oh, R&B period. singer. Oh, wow. He'll also Are be, we in there? Yeah, yeah. Come through. Come through. RSVP. The, the link is in my in my bio. Um, so feel free to come through. Um, he'll, he'll be performing as well. So that should be pretty cool. Oh, I love, love um, him. And of course, we got to shout out the team. Kieran's in the building. Shout out to VP of everything. Still not tired of me yet. Appreciate him. Shout out um, to the Siobhan boy. and Zara doing their thing remotely. Mm-hmm. Appreciate yes. them. But um, hey, let's, let's get right to it. So, of course, whether you like, whether you like burgers or glizzies, Queen Latifah or Missy, <laughs> Jordans or Nikes, and Calm Vibes or Hype Beats. Now, you was at Burgers and Bottles this weekend. I was. How was the burgers out there? 
the burgers was busting. Mm-hmm. I I've been to burgers and bottles like a few times, and this is my first time getting a burger. And I actually got the Seventh Street burger that I got the first time mm-hmm. that we recorded the mm-hmm. Patreon episode. So yeah, it was a bit small, but it was all you could eat. Mm-hmm. So that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. I saw the menu. The the burgers looked like. No, the yeah. Assortment to look fire. They took care of us. Like fire. the hundred dollar ticket Worth it. for entry, mm. you know, unlimited burgers. Mm. And Damn. you know, I feel like it was worth it, in my Damn. opinion. Like, Damn. I mean, I ain't paid, but I think <laughs> if you did, that yeah. was a that was a steal. I mean, that's, a, that's a that's a nice that's a nice yeah. Yeah, like it Shout was Shout out to parties who feed you. That's not bad. Yeah. That's they fed bad. you that's like they bad. had DJs from like every genre. It was that's dope. not bad. Was so I'm a, I'm a burger girl. I'm a burger girl. Well, how about you? For burgers or glizzies? Uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely a burger person. Um, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at. I'm not going to call them glizzies. I'm calling them hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's so just not good. what I'm going to do. So. I had to do it for, for the rhyme. I know. I know. I know. I know. A lot of niggas. A lot of niggas gonna click on this just because it says glizzies. <laughs> which and see your face. And, <laughs> and them niggas actually have to go look in the mirror at themselves. Mm-hmm. Cause why you click on this because it's glizzies. Right. But anyways, I like um I like I like burgers, especially yeah. especially, you know, the older you get and the more the more nicest nicer places you go when yeah. you, and you add they be asking, Oh, how would you like your burger done? Mm-hmm. Almost like a steak yeah. or something like mm-hmm. that. I think when that mm-hmm. happened. For me, I was like, oh, like, mm-hmm. okay. I like burgers a lot, bro. Yeah. Cheeseburgers too. Like Absolutely. I think I think, I think yeah. you said what'd you say last episode? You ate a burger without cheese for the and it was actually good. Yeah. And you know, a lot of burgers for a lot of people are probably good without mm-hmm. cheese. Yeah. I'm just I just like I like I just like cheeseburgers. Yeah, no, no. But big big cheese guy. Yeah. Like I used to ask my mom to send me with a slice of cheese for lunch in like elementary school. Seriously. Like, uh-huh. just, uh-huh. just in case. She, she, she wouldn't, she would give me real food. She would give <laughs> but, me a slice of cheese. My mom fed me. Yeah. But just in case, just in case, you don't know what you could run yeah. into, you might need a slice of cheese. No cap. No I'm cap. not a yeah, cheese I'm, person. I ain't gonna really? find it. I oh, wow. usually, you know yeah. What? My mom actually hates cheese. Same. And it's so I think crazy I'm to me. Like she doesn't like macaroni. She doesn't like none of that type wow. of stuff. And I could shit, eat macaroni, but like I don't want to taste cheese so much. I don't. I can't yeah, describe I mean, it. I don't know. I feel uh, it's okay. So I I, I understand a hundred percent. Um, but I'm definitely I'm definitely a burger person. What about you, Armand? Me too. Me too. Yeah, I think as a kid I was a hot dog person, and as I got older, um, it's just nothing like a good burger off a yeah. grill. And they like, cook with, it. With, they with cook the char it, right? on it. Mm-hmm. And, like, my, my uncle used to just like season them up. And, yeah. Barbecue sauce, like infused in the shower. I don't know how he did it, but I'm sure it's heat. It's heat. So I'm definitely a burger guy. Uh, Queen Latifah or Missy? Honestly, I did this one for the rhyme. I feel like it's a weird comparison, but I, I want to hear your thoughts anyways. Queen Latifah or Missy Elliott? I can't put two bad bitches against each other. I'm sorry. I, I can't do it. I understand. Well, you got to be the bad guy. I got, okay, I'll be the bad guy. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's between you said between Queen Latifah and Mary, Mary and Missy J. Elliott and Missy Elliott. Oh, Missy Elliott. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Like, what are we talking about here exactly? Like, <laughs> that's heavy. I, I, I that's just like heavy. to throw the comparison. I would say Missy. I would say Missy. Missy. Me too. I would say Missy just because I feel like I was um, I grew up a little bit more through Missy's Missy's era, yeah. and Missy's heyday, and um, yeah. You know her her prime, I guess. Um, yeah, Queen Latifah Queen to me was, was like introduced yeah. as an actress. Like I had to go back and listen exactly, to her music. Exactly, yeah. for me, it, great actress too. It, great movies. Exactly, it's the same thing happened. Same thing happened with me with with with, with um with her. Yeah. So, same. but I love her. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love her too. I think she, she's amazing. Legend. I think she's. I think her legend is not even. Her legend's not even quantified to the point that it should be. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, like you said, a lot of people haven't gone back and and and, and really sit down and, and look at what Queen Latifah was really doing. Right. Yeah. On a daily basis, like she was really. Huh. Yeah. She was one of them. If she a movie starred them. Queen Latifah or J Lo, I'm 100 percent watching it. Like I, I watch Equalizer <laughs> right now. That's Queen. Real shit. <laughs> Taxi, well, all, that type, about all that type of crazy stuff. And that was around Missy's heyday, so mm-hmm. low-key, you ain't even peep. You was watching Queen, but listening to Missy, so mm-hmm. that's how I can't pick. Mm-hmm. 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 Jordans or Nikes, what's, 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 what would we, re- we rather have on our feet? Jordans. This is, see, like, this one is, 
this one I feel like you on the last question because this one's tough for me. Um, I'm, I was born in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So the way my father looks at Jordan and the way Jordan was looking at in our household, I damn near thought Jordan was... I won't even say this because people are going to make fun of me, but... I low key thought Don't Jordan. I thought I low key. I low key thought Jordan was my father. Like it was like almost yeah. like he was Black Jesus to a lot of us, bro. <laughs> especially from the Midwest, and especially like living in living in Chicago. Oh my God, bro! The way the way he is revered and the way he, you know, it, it, it was just everything. And you know, a lot of people will tell you he built Nike. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's you why watch, I chose it. You watch, you watch that movie. Air, that, yeah. You watch Air that kind of that dro dropped maybe two years ago, I think. Yeah, he, he really um, revived it. That's why I chose yeah. Jordan. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he, I mean, he, he damn near built Nike. Yeah. If you would say, if you would say 90 or 85% of what Nike is today is built off of what Jordan did yeah. and how good he was just on the court alone, people, people, people that argue that, will look kind of crazy to you. Right. So, yeah. I say Jordan, but I say Jordan just from a, a, a fan perspective and living in Chicago, being born and living in Chicago and how revered he was. And, right. you know, that's why he's my goat. And I, I people want to argue me down to... To the last breath. Like, <laughs> yeah, we don't even got to go there. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, we don't even got to go there. And yeah. You're not going to change my mind because, like... Yeah, bro. I had, I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent. My father had a real life 6'6 cutout, cardboard cutout of Jordan. Oh, damn. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? And I would see that mm. in my house. Mm. So, you know, I would say Jordan, but I think Nike, I think Nike is up there over Apple for branding. Like, it's like, I think, it, I, think I think, I think it's damn near Nike, Apple, and then what? McDonald's or something crazy like that. Like that's probably. I just I, I, Nike's branding and some of the statements they used to. Some of the statements they still say and some of the stuff they like. Just do it is one of the craziest. Yeah. Yeah. And so and straightforward. So like, straightforward and a lot and it's really that simple. You can apply. Yeah, you apply it to your life. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised what you can do. If you just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Real shit. Yeah, I think I'm a Jordan guy too. I I. I always wanted Jordans growing up, like, and my, I would never even ask my mom to buy me them because we just had other shit to take yeah. care of. Like, as long as Fact. I had shoes to wear, I wasn't pressed. So, like, Fact. getting older, getting the bread to buy my own Jordans, it just makes it feel so. But, like, I got Nikes on right now. I got a bunch of Nikes. Like, I love Nike, too. So, I think aesthetically, I like Jordans more, but I fuck with Nike. OD. Like, I have so many Nike products. Um, lastly, Calm Vibes. Or hype beats, and this is just it's just like first one that comes to mind. It don't matter where you at, whether you got your headphones in, you outside. Like what? What, what would you rather be hearing? Hype beats. Okay. <sighs> this is tough. <laughs> this is actually tough for me because I was That's thinking. Why we're here. I was thinking about this question before too. And this one is tough for me. Um, and you said it doesn't matter what setting you're in. Just, just literally, if just someone like, says, "Yo, you can either listen to some calm shit or some hype shit," what you listening to? I would do hype. I would do hype. I would do hype. Okay. I'm a calm guy. I think it's the it's, it's the emotional lover boy within me, like. I, I tend to always gravitate towards the slower songs on albums. If I'm like listening to shit by myself, I love those too. Feel me? Like, I feel I'll, bad. I'll put the now. slow shit on. Or when I'm out at a party, it just hits different singing, singing along to something slow, even if I'm out with people. Like, so I think it's, it's uh, calm for me. All right, let's jump into this chat. So, got to, um, as I alluded to earlier, uh, shout out to the listeners, but there was one, one guy in particular. Like, I, I try not to react to the comments that we get on instagram or twitter or whatever just like i'll, I'll reshare the bad stuff i'll reshare the good stuff just because it's engagement you know what i'm saying <laughs> but there was this one dude who saw our reel talking about kendrick and how we said you know it's going to be scary for drake like whenever he releases this is it's going to be a stain on it like even if he goes number one people are going to give him that butt kind of statement and the dude interpreted it as us hate, like being hateful 
towards Drake. And I was like, I felt like that was a very measured assessment of what happened and the reality of his career moving forward. And so it kind of threw me off. And so I, I responded to him and I was like, yo, you, you, you got all this from like a, a one minute clip. Like I thought we were just assessing what happened. And then he was going on like, Oh, it's hot to hate Drake right now. Like it's trendy, blah, mm. blah, all this. And I was like, mm. yeah, I did you, you would be fascinated to know my entire show. We're all Drake fans. Like, like we're, we're not hating on him. We're not being hateful toward him. Like, we're all Drake fans. And the reality God. of the beef is, like, Kendrick beat him. And the clip you saw is us talking about Kendrick. Like, Will said, Kendrick is the boogeyman. The boogie, boogeyman came out. I said, Drake lost two times in a row. We're just being honest about the situation. But, like... We, it's not like we said, like, Drake didn't do his thing on Family Matters or whatever either. Like, I think we gave him his credit, but we just gave Kendrick his credit for winning the thing. And it, it just, it, 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 I think it triggered me because I've, I've been thinking so much about, one, you know how people use the phrase, the, that's hate. Like, like that, that's become like a more, a thing that's used more often lately. It's really annoying to me because it's like... Nah, it's not hate. Like, I'm, if I'm giving a measured critique of something, it doesn't mean that I hate it. I'm just being critical of something and your inability to comprehend that I'm being critical or maybe because you like something so much, me being critical of it makes you upset to where you think it's hate. Like that's fully on you. Like I'm, I'm not hating on shit. And it also, it's another thing that I've been talking about a lot, especially in the midst of the Drake Kendrick Lamar beef. I hate people who say they're objective. (laughs) Like I I hate it because humans, humans are inherently biased. Like, Right. When you sit down and you listen to something and you like it, you're immediately biased. If you dislike it, you're immediately biased because you're using your own personal feelings and opinions to uh, to assess something, to express a feeling about something. Talk to these it's niggas. It's okay to be biased. Like there's nothing wrong with being biased, but you can also be biased and give credit to something. So for example, Come. me, niggas know I'm a huge Drake fan, but I was giving Kendrick credit for Euphoria, gave him credit for Not Like Us, gave him credit for everything. Like, I felt like I gave a very measured mm-hmm. analysis of the entire thing. Mm-hmm. And so it, it it just annoys me when people make these assumptions off a one-minute clip. Like, the, and this is the era we're in. Like, you put these reels out, you, you want to get people talking, you want, you want to encourage them to come and listen to the entire thing. So you put something out that is thought-provoking, that may be uh that may be intentionally trying to get a reaction out of people but the point is to go listen to the full thing for context unfortunately a lot of people don't have that ability they don't know what yeah so <laughs> that that just annoyed me um a lot it, it was just very funny like do, do y'all think we're being hateful child <laughs> even if i was who gonna check me <laughs> yeah right like who gonna check me yeah i don't care i feel like it's getting to a point where people just don't want to be like, you know, labeled the bad guy mm. or just want to be so fake positive that they don't want to be honest. Yeah. Like, I fuck with Funk Flex. Like, he, <laughs> although yeah. everyone loves Million Dollar Baby. Yo, he cooked this one. He cooked it. And I was just like, yo, like, <laughs> we back for real. Like, and I appreciated it, even though I, I enjoy the song. I think Brent Fires released mad songs that already sounds like that. Right. And, you know, I enjoy Brent and that sound. But I appreciate Flex because I'm a New Yorker myself, so yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I think I saw I think I saw that comment and I saw when you was going back and forth. With <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was fun. I missed it. It, was, it was a little fun. Like it was like a, I think it was like Saturday morning. <laughs> I was just chilling. I was like, fuck it. Like, I'll, I'll engage. I'll, I'll see what he you says. Funny, motherfucker. Thank you. Yo, but I think, you know, especially, especially, especially what, 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 what she just said, what Miss Two Beast just said, like, bro, it's so much of people just wanting to have a comment and just wanting to be divisive just, just to say, oh, I comment on this because I swear to God, huh, I swear to God, it, it, if you come hard enough at people, mm-hmm. that next that next comment, that next mention will be, oh, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Chaz, oh, I yeah. know. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm just joking. Oh, it was just, I was just, I was just playing mm-hmm. to see if he was going to respond. Yeah. I know. And for funny enough, when I kept going back like with funny? him, he, he eventually said something yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm just being subjective. Yeah, I'm just. Like, well, nigga, yes, obviously, it's all subjective. We're all just giving our opinions. Like, <laughs> like what are we doing? You know what's my problem, man? What are we though? doing? When people be online talking like they know you from somewhere. Oh. That's really what it is. Cause you could be 
objective, <laughs> subjective. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what Ooh. you are. You don't know me in you, real life. You think Stop you know me from talking to me Next. like I won't pull up on you. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, remember that time on Twitter like 10 years ago when some dude traveled like yeah. miles and miles to fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mood. Yeah. All over Kobe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mood. Yeah. Talking about Kobe. <laughs> Mood. And some other shit. <laughs> Nigga was talking crazy. Well, but yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I just think, you know, these people, like, these people today are not even these people. Just people just people online and 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 you know a lot of things that's why are you sure mm-hmm. is, is is it's important and it's something i say to people it's not that important but it's like it's like fun little back and forth internet shit because a lot of these people they swear they know what we know what we doing know what's going on behind the scenes knows yep. what's know what's this and that who's getting paid out who's pulling this Who's writing this? Seriously. Who's this? It's like, are y'all serious? Seriously. Like, yeah. are y'all serious right now? And yep. we also have to acknowledge the fact that there's no age restriction on this internet. <laughs> we are, yeah. we are like in a pool with teenagers, early 20 year olds, people that were born in the year 2000 and later. Shit, you don't really know. Boomers. You don't know who. You know who. It could be somebody in somebody's basement. Yo. Somebody named Mama's basement talking someone, about basement. talking like, about talking about they know how the industry goes, but they was back listening to when the Izzy Bloods was dropping. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't even know what streaming really is or like what's well, really going I don't think those people are on the internet and okay, social media. You never know, though. Never, you never know, you never but know I would hope they're days. not. Mm. But it's 2024. The people young are crazy. Ones get bro. on my nerves because they don't yes. really have any reference for real pre streaming. Like, yeah. like, shut up, oh bro. My God. Yeah, that's, and, that's one thing. I think back to the days where I was a younger music listener yes. who thought he knew everything. Yes. And like, I used to argue with yes. older people and, and they would like sun me and I would get annoyed by yep. it. And, that, and now I'm that older person who, when a young nigga try to tell me something, I'm like, bro, you don't, get your young, your ass young whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's crazy, bro? You know what's really crazy? We're not even that old. No, we're, we're not. not. No, we're, we're not. not. Oh, we're not. I'm definitely not. We're I don't not know about old. y'all. <laughs> None of us are old in yeah. any sense of this of this game, yeah. of this industry, of this game of oh, life. Right None of us are old. And, and there is None value of in keeping younger people around you to keep you aware of artists you may not know about or just mm-hmm. to just to know just their perspective anything. on things so yes. like pop culture I, I don't ever try to really like sun someone unless they're really getting crazy with me but it is interesting to be on the other side of it now to where yeah. if someone is being a know-it-all with me i'm like little niggas <laughs> yeah but you know coming back to that video and the, coming back to that snippet in that video and how a person responded i feel like yeah i feel like from the jump in that video, we were all being super, if people want to say objective or whatever. <laughs> yeah. we, we were being the 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 idea. We were literally it. just telling the situation. We were just for telling what the situation I mean, how it happened. There, there, there's an, obviously there's no happened. finality to it. Like yeah. like there's no ultimate judge, but the 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 majority opinion, the consensus is we just Kendrick won. And so I ain't arguing shit. I would have responded, that. "Come beat my ass." Oh, okay. <laughs> well. Mm, they not There's like uh, they not like us. Hello? They not like sometimes us. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas. Yeah, they not like us. <laughs> Speaking of popping out and show niggas, Miss Two Bs was outside last week. Bryson Tiller concert. Oh baby, power event. To talk to us about, uh, about your week. I had a long week. I was you just was thinking out. about the weekend alone. You Damn. was out <laughs> after work outside. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bryson Tiller concert. I love Bryson Tiller. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love, love, love him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think mm-hmm. when did Bryson debut? Was that 2015 or 15. 16? 15. Yeah. Okay, 2015, but like he's still part of like that nostalgic era that we all can't let go. Um, I was also a part of like he did a poll on his um, broadcast channel mm-hmm. where the fans got to select the set, the songs That's on the set, fine. right? Dope That's marketing, fine. in That's case you want to steal it. Mm, I do, but <laughs> <laughs> um, he definitely kept true to that. Um, I wish that I would have heard more songs from. The new album, mm. but they probably, you know, saw the analytics and made their decision yeah. um, based on what was best. But now, the um, album's really good too. I enjoyed really it. Everybody, you know, everybody's saying that it's it really came good. out right before the I Kendrick listen, and Drake I beat. To it yet, yeah. It's good. You check it, it out. Listen to it. So you, uh, listen and then give your review on the show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then I was like the Bryson show. I love him. That's fine. Um, and he had a lot of people pop out there. Like, yeah. French Montana was there. Okay. Um, Eric Bellinger was there. Um, I think Blast was there. 
Like, just to see the show. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, I, I thought they performed. Nah, they okay. they was just like me. That's like, just to see the show. So, it was fire. Like, shout out to Bryson. Yeah, I saw, I, saw, I saw a video at the end where he uh, played... It was the Not Like Us beat, but I, f- I forget what song... What his, what, his, what, mm. what song his lyrics were over the beat. Probably Whatever She Want, because that's the only song I could think probably, that I would go probably, with Probably, yeah. I, I, found that, I found that interesting, because I know him and Drake had a friendship, collaborative relationship at some point. And in his Breakfast Club interview recently, mm-hmm. he was talking about how Drake left him all red, but the story like 10 years ago was 40 told him to take the RCA deal. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that the situation with that. I'm, I'm not trying to like really. Yeah, it's given but, messy. But it, it's interesting. It's just interesting timing yep. of it all. Yeah. Of it all. So very interesting. And then, then the power event. How was that? Oh, the power event. I felt like I wanted to cry. It was so bittersweet because I usually <laughs> yeah. cover the red carpet all the time. Yeah. So it's like, Damn. this is going to be the last time that we watch it as a family because mm. after the red carpet, they do a screening of the first episode. Mm. So, um, you know, being in the crowd with 50, Michael, Mary J. Blige, us giving real-time reactions, singing the theme song together, <laughs> like, you know, the after party. It was it was a moment. Um I have been to more extravagant power premieres, though. I must mm. admit. Mm. I don't know if 50 strained relationship with the network has anything to do with them scaling back. But, like, I've been to, like, ones where they would have, like, food buffets. Like, mm. the after party was at Tao, and they were, like, you know, doing the pass hors d'oeuvres. What? Yeah. And um, the screening was at Hammerstein. And when I saw it was there, I'm like, okay, maybe 50's going to put on a concert like he used to do. Mm-hmm. No. Mm. Like, it seems like he's ready to close that chapter Thanks. and move on. Mm. Um, and he's been very vocal about his relationship with them. Like, yeah. every time he told us to cancel our subscriptions, I cancel that shit every time. <laughs> every time. No, you're funny as hell. <laughs> every time. No, that's what's up, though. It, it, it looked cool through, uh, through social media, all locked the videos. In. You locked in. <laughs> Call me Ebony Tejada. Word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, you had a pretty busy week last week, too. I saw you on uh, IG Live with... Uh, <laughs> With YN, uh, how what 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 was that all about? Why YN? Can you well, who can you say who that is? What can you, you say? You don't know who YN is, <laughs> no, <can> you, <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, I only know him as Elliot Wilson. Um, <laughs> I'm like YN. Yeah. What? what wait. Explain to me seriously. That, nah. that that that's the moniker he would go by for his op eds on on Double XL, I believe. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. I didn't See? know that. You just put me on some shit. Yeah, right, man. Right. We're, we're, we're here to learn and teach. Fool. That's that's crazy. That's fire. <laughs> yeah, man. We um we linked up with we linked up with Elliot Wilson. Um, we went to Bel Air and we perf- uh, we not performed. I'm so sorry. There's so much stuff going on. We didn't perform. We actually made a a rump rump punch. Mm-hmm. And I learned at that Bel Air um get together or whatever you want to call it. It's it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't rum punch. It's rump punch. Obviously, Cash go Bane. Yeah, rump. he wants to rump all the time. Or I, I, I was I, at first. I was like, is he just? Is it a typo? Like, or does he mean rump punch? And then when it, the song came out, I was like, okay, it's it's rump punch. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like that. a lot of people were confused. <laughs> a lot. He looked at me. Cash looked at me crazy. Like I was like some idiot for being confused. And I feel like a lot of people were low key. Who was confused though? I caught that the first time based on the branding. Like, yeah, you rump. yeah. Cause, but I'm also a, a native. Song, rump. Yeah, I'm also a New York native, so I caught yeah. that shit immediately. Okay. Okay. But I was like, okay. The, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We starting today. <laughs> <laughs> we starting. Can't wait for that conversation. I was about to just say the native, the native conversation. Let's hold off till next. Nah, because if you was a native and he was like, y'all want to rump, you would have caught that. You want to rump? Yeah, you would have caught that. I mean, he has a song. Oh, what? All right. Anyways, anyways, like, anyways, uh, anyways. You feel anyways, me? I know. Okay. <laughs> God, golly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> I met up with Elliot. Elliot wasn't came and he shadowed us for that. And you know, Elliot's been slizzy for a while. He's been so- <laughs> Yo, shout out to Elliot and J. Cole. Elliot Wilson being slizzy is Elliot crazy. Wilson is Man, slizzy. Funny. He's slizzy as fuck. Y'all want you, you know, he, he's actually he's actually more slizzy than me on, on, I on, you. on, on the lowest of keys. God. I'm ta- cause I'm talking about after I'm, t- I'm gonna fast forward a little bit, but I'm gonna run back to this. I'm trying to tell y'all, I got a text from like I got a text at like 1 a.m. or like 
around that area from Elliot Wilson. Yo, I, 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 are y'all outside right now? I'm trying to get slizzy. <laughs> oh my God. I said, show me right now. Oh, he did not send you that. I want to say he ain't saying that. <laughs> I'm trying to get <laughs> Mood though, that's my mood all summer. I'm outside. My, my I'm nigga, outside. My nigga said, a slizzy song. My nigga I'm said it might, it, it might have not been a, might not have been one a.m. But it was late night. He was trying to it find was a late. move. It was late. It was right here. Yo, it's Elliot Wilson. Y'all outside tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, mood. <laughs> we both gonna be on your line with the same text. <laughs> No, y'all gave me too weak. Y'all have to cut this up a little bit. <laughs> but listen, so yeah, you know, we 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 met up with Elliot. He um he shadowed us while Cash made Rump Punch, mm -hmm. and it was it was fire. It was amazing. You know, um he's been like I said, he's been slizzy for a while. I've been supporting. You see how he posts. Um, yeah. And you see how he moves a little bit. How do you miss his posts? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, he covers then it. <laughs> The way he covers it is actually really inter it's interesting to me mm. just how he how much he posts and how much yeah. it's just very He the OG of this shit. Yeah, he's, like, he's yeah, it's like very facts. Active. It's like he's like he's doing it in a new age OG way. Yeah. You know? And that's what makes it kind of cool. Yeah. That's what makes it kind of like, you know what? I fuck with you. And then you know what? I was telling him straight to my face. I was telling him, I was telling him during the interview, it's like, yo, this is the type of stuff, you know. This type of interview, I'm interviewing with somebody that is a legend to mm -hmm. me and a legend in this in this music game and this in this this journalism game and just telling you telling these stories of yeah. you know this is the type of stuff that I'm gonna get off and tell my dad like yo dad I just did an interview mm -hmm. with Elliot Wilson and he's gonna hit me back like yo I remember Elliot Wilson was doing boom 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 at XX mm -hmm. double XL and stuff like that and that type of stuff is special bro that type of stuff is is very cool and it's very um. It reminds you why you're doing it. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. And that type of stuff is priceless. Absolutely. So, Speaking of Rum Punch, uh, Cash Cobain's new single, Rum Punch, came out this weekend. Um, I really enjoyed it. Like, I, I, I was telling uh, Jordan and Wongo, I was like, yo, if, like, if Fisher and Dunk Contest are the songs you hear at, like, the peak of the party, Rump Punch you hear, like, at the end of the party when shit's winding down. <laughs> You you asking her like yo well, where, where are you going after this you trying to get some food talk you know what I'm him. saying like <laughs> talk it's, to the, it's, it, it's the it's the it's, it's like the end of the roller coaster as you're talk like riding him. into the back into the station so talk we really him. enjoyed it um I thought Cash rapped well mm -hmm. um I've yeah, been listening I'm, to it for a while so I was happy yeah, yeah. it's on you stream it. I'm like yeah. <laughs> okay so okay so okay so you had the leak for a while yeah <laughs> okay no you know um I I. I don't get mad at leaks that much because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm definitely a person of the streets and a person of, of the culture. I, I, one of these sayings that I had, and I said it back when I was working with um, Pop Smoke, um, was when I first when I first said it, it just popped in my mind after the Dior um, studio session we had with Pop. I said, yo, the streets decide the summer. Mm -hmm. yep. They yeah. do. And it doesn't matter if people get these songs early. It doesn't matter if these songs get leaked a, a day before or two months before and this and that. If the people support you and the people are deciding the people want what's want what you're giving to them, especially in a city like this, how fast of word of mouth travels, how fast of, oh, you're on the train and, oh, these kids are dancing to... What is that? And it's from Cash, not from YouTube? What mm -hmm. is that? Yeah. Boom. Oh, uh, I just went home. I heard these kids dancing on the train to this, this, and now I'm playing. Yo, have you heard this guy's music? It's amazing. It's the streets decide the summer here, bro. Yeah. Especially in New York City, the streets decide the summer. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot of times, bro. And now I'm seeing it with the artists that I'm working with, and it's it's special. Yeah. Um, no, it's a slizzy summer. For sure, for yeah, sure. Nah, we, for sure, for sure. It's, it's special, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, I rump punch is... It just, it's it, rumping. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, he just, he just doing what he does. Yeah. And he's been doing it for, he's been doing it for a long time. Everybody's just kind of 
I hate, I, have, I don't want to be that guy. Like, oh, everybody's just paying attention now. Like, no, it's true. But though. The, but it was a New York like, artist for years, yeah. and now See, it's on you some know, mainstream and You get shit. it. Yeah. And you you no. understand. You've been you've been since dead. Jay Holiday since yeah, all the old like, songs. All, like, yeah, even even the stuff back. Yeah, you know. Even you at know. Fisher, like the little yeah. break when he mm-hmm. says, "Like, yo, when you hear that tag, that's mm-hmm. me, yeah. mad shit," because it's really mad shit. Yeah, yeah, no, and I mean, it's uh, it's just a testament to like. People catch on when, when they catch on. You know, I Facts. think I think a lot of artists, not not cash, of course, but they get into that mindset of people are sleeping on me. It's like niggas just might not know you yet. Like, yeah, and, and it takes a certain record, a certain feature, a certain whatever to get there. And so it's been really cool to watch his organic rise. Yeah. Like, and he's got a bunch of records right now that I really enjoy. Body with A Boogie is fire. Yeah. Attitude's going crazy. Yeah. Obviously, Fisher goes without saying. Correct. Um, so it's, it's 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 really cool to see. Like. I'm seeing people in like other states that I know, like mm-hmm. bringing him up, and I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, that's that that that's when you know shit's really taking there's, off. Like, there's a lot of indicators happening right now. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of indicators happening right now for cash, and just and I I feel like everybody in New York should be excited. It's how like you're excited right now about this. And, oh, and, one thing and, about it, if a New York native a New York native is making noise, I'm gonna act like I'm on their payroll people, every time. People, people are excited, <laughs> and that that's tight, man. That's that's tight, and you know I've been. Huh, I'm about to get in trouble for this one, but I've been saying for I've been saying for a while, bro. The East Coast, New York, uh, whatever. We've been making the hottest music, the hottest music since since pop. Even a little bit, even even a little bit before pop too. Yeah. We've been making like the hottest music because 2018 was the hottest Cardi's music, year. bro. We're not we're not pop. we're not messing around these trends. Is this lingo the what what we're talking about, the beats the sounds? If that's why every every song every song y'all hear is you hear them them big doom doom. It sounds like, it all it sound it, it. Everybody's trying to replicate this cash sound and this cash Cobain and this beat and not from and this beat from cash not from YouTube. But a lot of these niggas getting their beats from YouTube mm. and this shit is <laughs> this shit is this shit's getting crazy, bro. Yeah. It just is what it is. Thank you back in all for the statement that you made. I love that you said that. Make sure that we socialize that, Karen, because. <laughs> Um, a lot of people love to say like New York is dead in regards to like the music scene, and don't like, get me wrong, fucking crazy. I know it's been centered. The music scene has been centered around the South for a really long time. Yep. But when you think about the people who have moved the needle, mm-hmm. they are all from New York. Whether it be Cardi, whether it be Pop, whether it be Ice Spice, and now Cash Cobain. Right. Every single person that has moved the needle is from New York. And We're even not fucking around. analyzing A Boogie's career. I went to his show recently and I'm so impressed with the fact that he is able to sustain a young audience. Like He's a when he came out, I was, I don't remember, it was like 2016. I think he yeah. came out 2016. Mm-hmm. And I think I was like 18, but there's 18-year-olds going to his shows now. Mm-hmm. Like he is still hot, still relevant. People, he has so many clones. <laughs> like New York is he's really the voice. You feel yeah. me? He like, was, don't get me started with New York. New York, New voice. York, New York. No, no, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna piggyback a little bit more off this. I'm, <laughs> I'm about to finish it after this. But you know, when I first came to New York, you know, one of the artists you know, I was working with was, was was Little Uzi, but also at Atlantic. But also one of the at the same time, we you know who they just signed at Atlantic. When I was first coming in working with Uzi, they signed Boogie. Mm. And to see Boogie, the way he has, mm-hmm. I mean, bro, his name is Artist. His mm. real name is Artist. Literally. That's pretty poetic. Like, that's he's, so destined. He's different. Yeah, he's, de- it's like, yeah, like you said, it's destined. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's destiny, greatness already written by God himself. Mm. So I think uh, to see a, a Boogie where he's at and to see what he's doing and to see his longevity and, and who he is, like, he has diamond records, bro. Yeah. And not only that, he's diversified like, what, his portfolio like crazy. He's on a Proud Family reboot. He's not messing around at all. He's like, not messing yeah. around. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna front his last his last couple albums before this one that just came out. Uh, yeah, of I, course. I, I, I mean, I wasn't feeling him too much. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I wasn't yes, feeling yes, too I much. I agree with you. Yes, yes. And, and I think it was easy for people to kind of try him and off. write him off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just what the music game does. It does. Yeah, especially but all it takes that one. It's hard. Yeah, all it's it takes is that one for niggas to be like, oh shit, but oh, Boogie's yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm seeing a lot of positive reception for this. A album, lot so. of positive reception. People want to talk about sales with his album and this and that. Like, bro, fuck the sales. He's, he has diamond records, bro. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about sales right now. 
But you know what? You know what you do see from a lot of people. A lot of people do say it's good. Yeah. A lot of people do say like, "Yo, I listened to this album. It was, yeah. I actually like it." I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This and that. I think I think a boogie story and 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 we gonna keep talking about his longevity. It's very very good because you know what? He could have turned out like the last person we talked about. Um, I think the last episode he could have. He could have turned out like he could have turned out like a Fetty Wap. Mm. It could have been. Could've, it could have been. Could've. It could have been. It could have been. A, it could have been a Fetty Wap situation. It could have been. Uh, he had this crazy debut summer. album and this and it summer and this out. and that and maybe we had like two more singles and then it was just over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Boogie's thing has been. Yeah. Yeah. He the king of New York for real. Yeah. Yeah, bro. He's 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 him, bro. Yeah. Got a lot of respect for him. Shout to a Boogie. Shout to New York music. What you're talking about his young audience. He 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 does a lot of college tours too. Cause, cause Smart. that's so impressive. Because my homegirl Hennessy be opening up for him. And like he does Smart. a lot of college shows. Smart. And I think that's something that artists sleep Smart. on. You know? Like, why don't y'all do that anymore? Smart. Like they're the ones who got Smart. the time. You don't see I'm me and Will. You got the shades on. I'm tired <laughs> as fuck. Like, don't try to target me, man. Target Smart, them college bro. folks. Yeah. Smart, <laughs> yeah. And just for anyone who might get offended. Although we do agree New York artists move the needle, Atlanta's been doing their thing, Sexy Red's doing their thing, there's artists all over the country doing their thing, so we're not saying that other states are not doing their thing, but New York is the mecca, and there's there's an important the East Coast uh, element is to their being artists at the forefront from New York. The East Coast I'm is special. I want to be nice, y'all. Yeah, the e- I want my Jada Kiss shit. What they doing is good, <laughs> but it ain't good enough. I, All right. One more, th- one more thing too. I, the East Coast. I mean, bro. Like even thinking about it, y'all. <laughs> We had we had we had hood niggas hitting their hips. Come on, <laughs> like I'm talking Come about on. from the Sorry. lingo to the dances to the music to to everything. What's even happening? The Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, bro, everything happening here, everything, it's, it is what it is, bro. But, like Armand said, there's things everywhere. You know what the internet did? And one of the greatest statements I ever heard or quotes I ever heard, the internet unturned every rock in the world. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff in this world, and especially across this country of America, USA, that it's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of shit influence and a lot of this and that. So everybody keep doing their thing, but you know. We doing it the most over here. <laughs> New York. So we do it. Um, some more new music. K Trinata dropped Timeless. Um, it was uh, I want to say 19, 19 songs. That shit was too long. 19, I ain't gonna find. I couldn't. 21, uh, 21 songs. Um I I I get that. That's valid. Um, I think thankfully he does a good job of keeping his runtime on his songs pretty short. So it was 21 songs, hour and three minutes. Um, it was a pretty easy listen for me, um, just cause I really love this type of music. It's, it's, it's a very refreshing project to get coming out of the very lyrical rap beef that we just saw. Um, <laughs> and I think the thing that I really enjoyed about it was, you know, you look at a track list like this, you see Don Tolliver, you see, um, Anderson Pack, Sir, Childish Gambino, but my favorite songs were the artists who like weren't the biggest names, like Lou Phelps on Call You Up. Mm. I really liked uh, Duran Bernard on Weird. I really liked Charlotte Day Wilson on Still. Mm. Uh, Dawn Richard, who was in um, Danny Kane on Hold On, like that was yep. a great record. So I just really enjoyed this. I feel like Katrinata has just been this enduring presence within the space, like making, showing like the range of black music, this upbeat yeah. house dance type stuff, and then bringing people into his world and just showing like what they can do the their range. So really enjoy the album. I've, I've been running it up uh, over, over the last few days. I saw Katra live last fall. It was a really dope show. It was, it was him and um, I forget who at the time, but really good show. So I can't wait to hear this in a live setting at, at a function. These songs, some of these will be playing at, at my birthday function for sure. So <laughs> yeah, definitely mm-hmm. rooftop vibes. You feel me? Setting you feel the, me? It's going in rotation with Tyler. Yeah. For sure. Oh yeah. That's, that's a great album too. It's mm-hmm. a really great album. Yeah. Um, that's all yeah. Oh yeah. No, Dick Catron, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I, I was about to say I, I, I like the Don Richards track. Yeah. I like yeah, yeah. I, I listen I listen to the album. I, li- I like the Don Richards track. I, I I'm also always, has been interested in what Don's been doing since Dandy Kane. She does yeah. a lot of stuff that's on the digital space and mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of cool stuff. She almost worked I think she's worked with some of my friends on like 
building these digital crazy AI characters mm. for Fire. her music and, and rolling it out and stuff like that for her album. So I think um, K. Trinata linking with her is something very next level 2024 or maybe 2060 mm. type of next level <laughs> stuff that they're doing. So, yeah. And I just also think it was solid of him because I remember when Beyonce dropped her house album, a lot of people mentioned that Dawn was already, Mm. you know, experimenting with that sound for a long time. So it was dope to give her the platform. Smart. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. sure. That's a good point. That's a great point. Yeah. So it was definitely one of my favorite releases of the year so far. Childish Gambino on Witchy was actually really good, too. I haven't Mm. liked anything he's been on since, like... (laughs) I don't even fucking know. Two thousand five. Like, uh, yeah, honestly, because like, I wasn't too big on uh, "Awaken My Love" is twenty sixteen joint, so it was probably two thousand five. The, the rest last... of the world was, huh? Yeah, the... I was about to say that was that album right there. <laughs> the rest of the world was, huh? Yeah. yeah, I don't know, but um, really like him on that record. Uh, Pink Panther, "Snap My Finger" was dope. Even even Mar- Mariah the scientist in this bag, I, I fucked with it. Um, yeah, she's, she's been expanding. She expanding. underwhelms me. My... However, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. My bad. Is that Pink Panther song the one that we've been talking for so many? Is, or, or is that is that her own song? Is that her own song? Because it was, I think it was Kate Trinata produced, but I don't know if she dropped. Was that her own song? Or is that on his album? So she got snap my finger on this album. She and she then, just dropped. She just recently dropped a single though too. Yeah, it's different. It's yeah. different. But that's I think that song. I think that song's produced by K. Trinata yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. And, oh they my been god, I love that song. That song was some. That's some very singing in the shower like. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, <laughs> I saw a funny tweet. It was like, Yo, K. Trinata got Pink Panthers on a song longer than two minutes because you know she like to keep yeah. it short. <laughs> She's like, we don't need no bridges. We don't need no no outro. All that. Like, oh, look at you all you on, know, on a three and a half minute song. We're sharing the internet with people who have this tape. Mm-hmm. Will we really yeah. commenting under real? and yeah. saying what they say so that's why I don't engage and I mean I wasn't mad at it I, I do understand like music purists who are like I'm not mad at it either but I do full say composition of songs bridges are good all that's good like, I, I like that stuff but I also do like I, I don't mind a, a breezy good record you know, sometimes and, too and, like and, and you know get in what? get out getting to know her because we did the Apple shoot with with her and Cash mm-hmm. and just getting to know her and how she you know her starting and how she really got into music and what she was doing before and and how she I can see why she doesn't do songs you know she was in her room with her with a with a mic and garage band open on a computer trying mm-hmm. to record like bro she's not doing full ass like compositions of yeah. four minute three like three minute songs she's trying she was just she was just making music and then you know it hit and she likes her formula mm-hmm. and. That's what she wants to stick to. Yeah, and and it's like become her gimmick. Like I remember when I first started listening to her, my my boy was like, "Oh, you're gonna have the best 20 minutes of your life. Like, you go <laughs> yeah. get in, and get out." Damn, yeah. That's <laughs> kind of fire, though. Because that was like her when whole you think about it, that's kind of fire. I guess like, you, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to close the matter. Let me get out of here quick. 20 yeah. minutes. I'm gonna feel the best of my life. I'm out of here in 20 <laughs> minutes. Bet. Fire. You can <laughs> run it back too. Yeah, yeah. career gonna be quick too. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, man. Oh, let's catch it. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll see about that. But. uh that's our music talk. Let's get into some sports stuff. The NBA Finals are underway. The Boston Celtics are up 2-0 on the Dallas Mavericks. Now, before we get into it, I would like to introduce a new segment called Two Minute Drill. How Two Minute Drill is going to work is at any point, any of us, if we ever want to rant, just completely unfiltered, uh, uninterrupted, call mm. two, two Minute Drill. You got two minutes to yourself. Fire. So I'm going to initiate this because I have some thoughts to get off. About Jason Tatum Go and ahead. the hate that he is receiving. So, yes. two minute drill, ready, hut. Let's go. You niggas are stupid. <laughs> the, the, the conversation surrounding Jason Tatum is extremely weird to me right now. The Celtics are winning. They're up 2-0 on the, on, the, on the Dallas Mavericks. And all y'all focus on is the fact that Jason Tatum is not shooting well. Okay, fine. The point of basketball is to score. To score more than your opponent. Completely understand that. But, you can affect the game in other ways. It's a team game. We're, we're not playing one on one at the park, on the playground, whatever. Like, like the the point of there's a lot of different things you can do on, on the court: rebounding, passing, defending, all that good stuff. So you all only focusing on the fact that Jason Tatum isn't scoring 30 points every game. Very, very strange to me. Like I, I saw some stat that he has the worst field goal percentage in the finals right now. So what? He's only played eight NBA Finals games. So what? So what if he's got the worst field goal percentage in the NBA Finals right now? 
he's he he is averaging throughout the playoffs leading up to the finals. He's, he was averaging 26 points, 10 rebounds, six assists. Against the Indiana Pacers, he was averaging 30 points, 10 rebounds, six assists. So you know he's a capable scorer. We've seen him drop 50 in the playoffs. Like, we, we, we know what he's capable of doing. Like, this whole narrative of, is Jalen Brown's team, Jalen Brown is better, <laughs> blah, blah, all this. At, at the end of the day, when Jason Tatum is on that court, the Dallas Mavericks are prioritizing him as a defender, which is opening things up for the rest of the team. That's why we're seeing Drew Holiday lead the, lead the team in scoring one day. Al Horford's able to lead the team in scoring another day. Jalen Brown, Derek White, Chris Porzingis came back, cooked. Like, yeah, y'all yeah, not really thinking. And honestly, I either believe you're either just looking at box scores or you're just mad that your parlays are not hitting. That's probably really what it is. And you know what? I've been there too. I get it. But if we're going to have actual basketball discourse, you guys need to stop focusing on just, just the scoring. Could he shoot better? Yes. Two minute drill. Over. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I had to get that off because like, I'm just seeing the wildest tweets. Like people are. <sighs> can I? Can I? Can, can I talk about it a little bit too? Can I do a drill? <laughs> I, it's not going to be a two minute drill, but you know, and I'm not going to say piggyback, but That's you know, favorite. I'm a. It's a great word. It's, a great, it's it. a great. It's a great word. You know what? Piggy piggyback became so popular it did. during the clubhouse. Oh my god! And the fucking Zoom. One era. mic. One mic. Yo, one mic. One mic. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm about to piggyback off of. Huh? 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 It'd be it's, like it's, five piggybacks. <laughs> Niggas be just be piggybacking. It's crazy. We're about to go on four years since Clubhouse was a thing. Like insane. That, that is crazy. Insane. But go ahead. Well, sorry. COVID. You fucked up a lot of shit. Niggas started piggybacking. Niggas was carrying. <laughs> Niggas started carrying everybody. Read with the room. <laughs> read the room. That, that's a good they one. Ain't with that's that a good one. one. I fuck with that. Read, with that one. read the room was a good one. one. Facts. Read the room was a good one. Yeah. But you know, um, I'm a Duke fan. So I've, I've been following. I've been following Tatum for a minute, um, and I will tell. I tell. I tell my fellow Duke friend. I tell my friend Justin, who I grew up with as a Duke fan. I never thought Tatum would be this good. I thought he was gonna be nice. He was cool at Duke. He was very good at Duke. I wouldn't say cool. He was very good at Duke. I did not see him being this good. Yep. The way people, um, people just hold him to a standard that is so high. And I get it. And he did it. He did. He did. He did some corny stuff in people's eyes. To me, it wasn't that bad. But whatever. Are you talking about when he texted Kobe? The Kobe thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that that was bad. He was maybe like what? I think he was like twenty one when he did that. Yeah. Um, because. Well, you gotta put me onto the tee. What happened? So, uh, Tatum was mentored by Kobe while Kobe was alive. So they actually had a, had a relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in Pretty the twenty twenty two playoffs, I think it was a closeout game, and he texted Kobe. I got you today. But mm -hmm. Kobe had, had, was obviously dead by then. He passed, right. yeah. But Jason Tatum actually went out and like won the game and stuff. So it was like, it was... So what were people mad at? People just thought it was corny that he just, texted Kobe texting, and then posted it he's texting online. Him. Yeah, The posting part was probably corny. Yeah. You know, I, and, and, but like that's why I said he was maybe... 21 or yeah. 22 when he did that. He's a yeah. young kid. I told my you friends know, they're like not allowed to grieve me on the internet. It's, it just always <laughs> looks corny. Every time. Yeah, I mean, that's how people that's how people feel about it. So I know that happened and just the way people just talk about Tatum. And also the Celtics in the Tatum, they've been good for a long ass time. Yeah. So a lot of people are just at this point, they're just nitpicking. They're sick of him. Yeah. Either win a title or go home and, and, and stop this. So I which, think, which I get, like that's that's fine. That's fine. But that's fine. That's the fine. the hyper criticism of his it, performance is like it's ridiculous. He, he had 18, 12, and nine the other day, and I had someone tell me that's mid. I'm like, bruh, niggas would like, pray to average 18, 12, and nine. He almost like, had a triple double. Like what? What, what are we had, talking about? He was at a triple double chilling. You, you and, and 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 you know what's fucked up too. Uh, shout out to, shout out to my boy Cameron Hay. He posted game two of the 2013 NBA Finals. LeBron James only had 17 points that game. But you don't see nobody talking about, oh, LeBron should have had 30 because he was able to affect the game in so many other ways. Passing, defending, rebounding, all that. So, like, if you just want to look at box scores and just focus on points, then okay, sure. Yeah, cool, go ahead. he's ass. But in reality, yeah. no. Like, in reality, he's he's affected the game so crazy. I think I saw that I saw that one post about how they're 
how they're sending him in the lane mm. and it's like literally changing the game. Yes, like, yeah, he's, like he's taking away the Mavericks lob threat. Yeah, it's yeah. like literally, it's literally changing the game. So I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of anybody in this finals, but you know, if Tatum can can do this and, and wrap this up and, mm. and shut people up for a little bit, I yeah. would be pretty okay with it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I like him. I don't know if I'd say I'm a fan, but I, I like his game. I like, um, I like, I like his work too. ethic. I like, I like the too. way he's elevated over the years. He's cool. Stepping into a very harsh city like Boston. Like, it's, it's not signed, easy to play he there. He signed to Jordan. Guys on, his, his shoe is actually decent. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. I think he's a cool. I think he's, I think it's cool. Yeah. Cool so, dad always has a son, of course, I would him a little He'll be on the side. Lakers in, in like five years. People, I, will, people will be ecstatic. I would love that. <laughs> so for the next game, who's which team should I put my parlay in? <laughs> well, hey. Dallas is going back home. They haven't. I'll put on the Celtics <laughs> still. Celtics. I right, still bet. would. Yeah. I think about to step honestly, on yeah. I think about to step on them. Say that. Yeah. Honestly. I think they're about to step on them. The, like I, I was talking to my boys about they're it last night. I was like, yo, them. unless like Luca and Kyrie score forty each, this is looking a little sweepish. They're about to step. This, on this them. is looking sweepish. This okay. is like this is this is. This is step on the throne moment. Yeah. And I feel like they're about to do it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to put a little bet in. I yeah, need, I need yeah. a fill in for we my could, nails. We could talk about parlays yeah, together in the, in the chat. <laughs> um, some other sports stuff. Moving over the, to the WNBA. Uh, I'm sure you all have seen this Caitlin Clark conversation, huh? <laughs> how, how, how much of it is coming across your, your TL, Miss Two Bs? A lot. Mm-hmm. You know, the intersection between sports and music yeah. is like, especially with the NBA and hip hop. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, I'm not a sports person, but mm-hmm. I definitely see like the discourse online and Angel Reese trying to defend the fact that she is part of the reason why the WNBA is being discussed. And she ain't lie because I didn't know who Caitlyn was until they started talking about her to kind of like negate Angel Reese. I don't right. know if it's because of my algorithm. Like I only engage with black shit. So <laughs> I don't know if that's why. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely agree. I'm watching for her. I only mm. care about her. Mm. Like when I seen her in the um video with Lotto and Cardi, I'm like, oh look at Angel. Mm. Like, you don't see no rappers inviting Caitlyn to no music videos? Or are they? No. Let me stop chatting, but I don't know. No, no. Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't, okay. I don't, I, well, I, I, I haven't seen it, but I don't know what she would do in a music video anyway. Yeah, she, bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a very overwhelming conversation. Like one of those things I don't even want to get into on social media. I would rather speak about it audibly here. Um, I've gone to the two Liberty games where Caitlin has played them. I saw her put up like 22, eight and six, one game. She, put up, she, she put up three, another game. Um, Liberty whipped their ass both games, but like <laughs> she's, she is a very incredible player. I would never take that away. The frustrating part of this, and I'm not going to act like I've been a lifelong WNBA fan. Like I really only got into it like a lot last year, but I've been watching it enough and I'm around enough people who are fans to kind of get a sense of what the league was about pre Caitlin. And people were acting like she is solely responsible for more viewers, chartered flights, all that. And she is a huge contribution to that. I would not take that away. Like she is, she's like probably the biggest athlete to come into a professional league since Braun. Like that's, that's the type of visibility yeah, like momentum. That? Yeah. Like I, like I, honestly, honestly, she's, She's the biggest athlete, like biggest rookie since LeBron in my perspective. Mm. And so, and fully deserving of it. Incredible player. Um, but the WNBA was growing before her. Like they had stars before her. Asia Wilson, Kelsey Plum, yep. um, Sabrina Ionescu, Brianna Stewart, um, Skylar Diggins Smith going back years, Candace Parker. Obviously, you go back to the Lisa Leslie days, all that. Like there have been stars before her. So to act like She's the savior of the WNBA is a really frustrating thing to watch. Like she didn't get picked for, for the, uh, the women's team for, for the Olympics this summer. And everyone's like marketing wise, why would you not pick her? It's like, it's the, it's the Olympics. You, you want to put out the best team. She's had some really good games this season, but she's also had some shitty games. And you know, if, if, if you're looking at 12, a team of 12 within the WNBA right now, she wouldn't be one of the 12 that I picked either. Um, and people, they're just, the conversation isn't even about basketball anymore. It's about yeah. race. It's about ratings. It's about views. It's about all this stuff and how these veterans should be thankful to this girl. I, if if I was a vet, I, I wouldn't be bending over backwards and m- taking it easy on her. Like, and right. that's just the nature of sports. Like, I remember being a freshman 
when I joined the football team, like the juniors and seniors used to damn near bully, bully us. Cause like, yo, like, you know, come on this team and be soft. Like you gotta, you, you gotta get it. Like we got it. So it's been a really frustrating thing to, to watch. Very annoying. And uh, it's always the most uninformed voices that are the loudest. Mm -hmm. Like so many people are talking about this sport now that weren't talking about it before. And I love that for the WNBA that they're getting this visibility. People like to say any publicity is good publicity, whatever. But it's just certain people that really should sit back and listen before they speak. Mm. And that's just not a skill that a lot of people practice. <laughs> um, so it's, 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 been, it's been annoying. And again, I don't want to take anything away from Caitlin Clark. She's a, a fantastic player. Might as well be a star already. Definitely going to be a superstar, you know, as she gets more accustomed to the league and her team is not that great right now. So they ain't going to be, you know, going far anytime soon, but she's coming in with a lot of pressure. And, and I, I like that. She's not really in the media talking a lot about, you know, what's happening to her. Like Kennedy Carter gave her that hard foul. Caitlin was like, no, there's no apology necessary. She acknowledged that it wasn't a basketball play, but she was like, there's no apology necessary. And people also don't acknowledge that she'd be talking shit too. Like she should be popping her shit on the court. Like mm. I've seen her games mm. whenever a foul is called on her, she got attitude. Whenever someone fouls her, she got attitude. Like she, she, you know, has some, has some attitude issues or whatever to work out on her own. So like she invites some of the energy by one, just being good, but also two by, by popping her shit and you pop your shit. Like niggas going to take it there. So yeah, um, literally. And so, yeah, I, I just need people to be more, more like honest about this entire thing. Um, I, I love what she's done for the WNBA, but I also love what Angel Reese has done for the NBA and uh, WNBA and Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson. Like the, it's, it's a great rookie class overall. And does Caitlin deserve a lot of credit for the visibility and everything? Absolutely. But there's people who paved the way before her to, to get to this point. Um, so. That's that's all I got. It's 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 annoying. It's really annoying. I'm, I I I wish we could just put like a ban on discourse for like a week. Like, nigga, like go back to posting food pics and, Word. <laughs> Word. and like everybody has an opinion. Like uh, fucking the the old Facebook games they used to do where it's like yo like the status for honest confession or <laughs> <laughs> like the status for I ain't a rape. Front. We need to bring that back. Yo, I need some times. motion real quick. Good times, yo. Yeah. Good times. I need some motion real quick. That was a great way to uh you know <laughs> slide a raid into someone who you was trying real to talk quick. to. You feel me? <laughs> but yeah, the the, the discourse is uh, it's it's been exhausting. So yeah, I ain't gonna hold you. I haven't seen Caitlyn until I saw Angel Reese being talked about. Mm -hmm. So I don't watch it and. Yeah. That's just like my measurement to know like which athlete is super famous. Yeah. Like if I know who they are, mm -hmm. like Carmelo, AI, like if I know who you are, like, okay, you big are. Deal. Yeah, you yeah. a big deal. So <laughs> Yeah. Um it's a, it, this whole thing, and I, I I'm gonna stop saying this word after this. The whole thing's unfortunate. Mm. <laughs> because yeah, I saw that quote with <laughs> Dude. I mean, the way I said unfortunate on the Drake and the, the Drake and Kendrick stuff, people it like were like, at a funeral. So. People were like, "Damn, it's just it's just unfortunate." Like that's what it, it, it is. is. Mm. It is unfortunate. Mm. It's unfortunate because you know Angel is a great player, and, and what Angel has brought to the to the sport, the visibility, how she's talking. You know her her teammate. She makes rap music, and that that song went boom. Yeah. and this and that. They're at LSU. She's from Baltimore, East Coast. Like what Angel is doing is amazing and it's fire. And it's it is it, it's, it's everything that you could want and more in a in a in a in a in a woman's player and bringing um validity and light to to the to the women's game. But what I will say about Caitlin Clark is she has the most points scored in NC. Double A history, yeah. men's and women's. Yeah. All right, so she's, she's really her. Yeah, she's, she's her. She's right. she's her. She's yeah. All right. she's, that's, that's why she's, I said she's it, the biggest it, thing. It's a Brown. little. It's a little. We just gotta. We just gotta pump the brakes because what we're dealing with right now is the new age. And I don't even want to say it either because I think it's corny. But it's the new age. Um, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson type of yeah. type of type of thing. Yeah. So and it was, and Magic it's, Magic even co-signed that. Yeah, and and it's just and it's just on the women's side. Yeah. So, you know, I think 
yeah, the conversation is way out of control. Mm -hmm. But that's what that's what happens when 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 stuff like this is happening with somebody like Angel Reese is is the coolest thing. She's the coolest thing for young girls that they've seen in a long time since maybe like who do you, who can we even say like on an athlete wise like what like Lisa Leslie or some shit I don't know bro that was when I was I can't, a kid I can't yeah that's what I'm saying I can't I I don't know maybe there's probably more I just can't I can't think in my think in my head but she's the coolest thing she's the coolest thing for young young yeah. women in, in in a long time sports yeah. wise athletic wise. And Beauty, she, lifestyle, her yeah. lashes stay done, hair stay done, relatable. everything. everything. Yeah, and she's a baddie. Like. She's in music videos. Mm -hmm. She's in, you know, this and that. And Kaylin Clark is that for another group of people. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. just have fun and remember this is all just sports and entertainment. And let's just. Let's just keep it. Let's just keep it going and not worry about too much else. Because y'all about to make it something that's not. Y'all gonna be salty when it blows up in y'all face. So, yeah. Um. All right. Let's move on to this board meeting. We're gonna talk some more women rappers. Um. Which I don't like calling them. I just like them to be considered rappers. But Billboard put out this list of the ten hottest female rappers, and I would love y'all perspective on it. So, let's run through it. Number ten, Flo Millie. Number nine, JT, one half of the City Girls. Number eight, Lotto. Number seven, Cardi B. Mm. Number six, Glorilla. Number five, Ice Spice. Number four, Doja Cat. Number three, Megan Thee Stallion. Number two, Sexy Red. And of course, always number one, Nicki Minaj. Always. Thoughts on the list? Um, like we said, like I said during when we spoke about the last list, they put this shit out for outrage. And, <laughs> you know, it's an engagement farm. I don't believe anyone at Billboard. Actually, scroll up to the authors. They have the authors on there. They do, yeah. And just shout out to my guy, Carl. Okay. Um, Gail, Damien, uh, Heron, Andrew, Kyle, Michael, Angel. All, all people I know, I'll be bumming them in, in, in the office. Okay. Cool How many is black? Uh, That's up for Carl, because I know Carl Black. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Five black, one Latino, and then everyone else is white. So it's the majority's black. Okay. I would get into like what type of black they are, but <laughs> listen, I ain't gonna get into all that. The mm. list needs to be reworked. Cardi needs to be lower. Mm. Low like number ten. Number oh. 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 Cardi, like we Let's said it last it. episode. Let's get to it. <laughs> we said it last episode. Like, Cardi had like a super mega debut, but it, you know, in a, you know, impressive feature run, if you ask some people, but like, she needs that sophomore album and she needs that solo single to come out to stick. But while she's been working on that sophomore um, album, or every other girl that's been mentioned has been making waves. Mm -hmm. You know, Flo got Never Gonna Lose Me. Like, I would keep Flo, like, maybe, like, number nine. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely move JT up, probably to where Cardi is at, like, number five. JT's nine, Cardi seven right now, so you move JT to five? Oh, like, I would just move her higher based okay. on, like, just... If this is from, like, 2024 or, like, from 2023 and on... Um, Let's do the criteria. I definitely think, yeah, like, what's the criteria? Criteria is quality of records, chart success, buzz within the culture, notable business endeavors, and partnerships. And it's for the Ooh. first six months of 2024. Okay. Partnerships is crazy. So, so, like, I'm about to say, so that, that fine print, you know, definitely makes a difference because mm -hmm. Cardi B is queen. Mm -hmm. Partnerships, huh, yeah. sweetie? Yeah. Got that in the bag. Megan B, you know, mm -hmm. coming through for her partnerships mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So, like... That's crazy. I do think that... I, like, I hate how much partnerships are, like, being Wait. valued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're being way too... Too much. They're and that's why people are telling crazy. Cardi she don't need a sophomore album mm -hmm. when she do because she's visible because of partnerships. Mm -hmm. When it's like, no, baby. We're talking about the music. We're talking yeah. about the music and you... and. She's a part of that East Coast wave we was talking about. Like, you got to, like, make your stamp, mm -hmm. my girl. Like, the, the partnerships the are cool, but... Yeah, fuck all that. 
Yeah, and that's why Nikki's able to do what she do. You she, know, Queen Bob here. But that's why she's able to do what she, she do. The like music, nigga. I mean, it's, it's the music. Yeah, it's nothing you can deny. It's it's I'm always the, the music, music has always been the driving force. For Remember Nikki. when um Travis Scott got cocksucker of the day on Queen Radio, mm. and she told him like, "Yo, you selling clothes, and you got niggas thinking you selling music." Mm. We, did she lie? No. Did she fucking lie? When she said, name Travis Scott, best bar, I cackled. Like, yo, you're funny. <laughs> I cackled, but no, seriously. Like, JT. Brand, brand, yeah, bro. JT and her guerrilla marketing and how she's been able to make a name for herself. Her. She's been doing it. She, my girl needs to be a little bit higher on that list, especially because when she came home from jail, it was March 2020, literally right before the pandemic. The girls ain't get to do what they were really supposed to do. Yeah, City um, Girls dropped an album during the pandemic, too. Yeah, and, you mm. know, they they basically kind of confirmed their little break or break up or whatever. And, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a female. I've been friends with girls since we were young. Shit changes when you grow up, become a mother, fall in love. Like, it's not like you're, I'm not seeing, you're not my shadow anymore. I can't right. see you five days a week, like, if we're in school and stuff like that. But, you know, getting back to the list, I do think that um, Megan should have been number two. I'm not denying Sexy Red is having a moment right mm -hmm. now, but I just think they put her a little bit too high for hype and for us to be outraged because they know how polarizing she is as an artist and a brand. I think what Sexy does have over Meg, Meg's latest music for me hasn't really been hidden like that. I know Hiss went number one. Um, Cobra, no, right. Cobra was whatever. Boa was the one I liked the most. I do like her wannabe track with Glorilla. That, uh, that joint's really good. Yeah. Hmm. Um, her feature on Sunday Service was pretty good, too. But for the most part, man, Meg Musical.ly, for me, hasn't really been connecting like for a couple years now. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give her grace because a lot of people ain't been connected uh, with me. Very true. It's just very the, true. the genre as a whole. I think mm -hmm. everyone needs work, so I'm going to be graceful with her for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but... So every single Sexy Red song hits? You don't think no, they all and, sound and the same? No, not, not every single one hits, but I think that she has... She's got multiple songs working for her right now. She's got Ski that's still moving. She's on Rich Baby Daddy. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Get It Sexy is doing pretty well. Um, you Might Everything, even if it's maybe not the best song, like it's it, it's got motion right now. It's got motion on the internet. People are doing the dance. It's going viral. She's using TikTok very well for that. Um, I haven't actually. I did hear Pound Town out recently too, so I, I think it's just been her ability to be consistent. Um, yeah, is, is 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 what's working to her advantage right now. Like she's white hot. Like we're catching her in the midst mm. of a of a rookie run, and maybe and that's the thing is like people sometimes get a, a bit too excited about rookie runs. Like, yes. I want to see you establish staying power, and, and it's not that I doubt she has staying power. I just want to see it Same. before I'm ready to say. She's number two on, on a list like this. And I feel like Meg kind of already, although the music hasn't been hitting, mm -hmm. I agree with you. I feel like she kind of established that. Like, she she did early on, but I, for me, the music hasn't been hidden since her mm -hmm. debut album, Good News. That was four years ago. So for me, it's been four years of... Eh, Wait, Good eh. News was the debut? Yeah, her debut album. I mean... Oh, remember, that was that we, era when people would label yeah, flop albums, yeah, yeah, mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, like... like oh, yeah, yeah. She, I she, had, she had, like, three debuts. <laughs> but, 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 like, Good News was the yeah, official no. debut. Yeah, yeah. She dropped that in, like, November 2020. The intro, she, she was dysentory, all that. I, I, I didn't like that album. And Traumazine, the follow-up, wasn't really good to me either. Um... I'm not sure what happened because, like, 2018, 2019, Meg was churning them out. She was going crazy. Yeah. Cash shit, big old freak. Like, she was, she was going crazy. Well, you I know was, what happened. We saw it. Right. Of course. Of course. And, and I think it's been, a, it's been a tough her getting back to where she needs to be musically. It's, it's, it's been tough for her. And I've, I, yeah. I've, I have all the sympathy in the world for what she went through personally. Yeah. But I got to be honest, the music for me hasn't been connecting. Like, I, I would rather listen to a sexy red. I would rather listen to Glorilla. I would rather listen to Nikki. I would rather listen to Cardi, even though Cardi hasn't really been connecting. So, but what Meg has done well is be a brand. <laughs> like she, she sold out arenas for her tour, her for her first tour too, which you know worked out to her advantage. People had, had never seen her tour before, so that worked out to her advantage. And people just love her. Like that's that's really worked to her advantage. Her personality. Um, the partnerships, she's twerking all the time. Like, like, how, how can you really hate somebody who's twerking all the time? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, 
So that that stuff works to her advantage. But I, the, this upcoming album, I I really need to see something personally because um, I just for the last few years I haven't I haven't really been too into it. Listen, they got the number one spot, right? So I'm Gucci. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, but I, I do agree, like, Flo Millie is having a moment right now. Yeah. She was on the Sunday Service remix as well. You feel me? Um, Lotto's been pretty consistent as hell. A lot of people yeah. don't like to give her her flowers, but she's super consistent. Yeah. I, I got really into Lotto the last couple of years. Like, she's been she's been doing well. It's time for an album. She hasn't dropped an album since 2022, so it's, it's time for an album. Another album. But um, yeah, she's she been doing her thing. She doing you her know, thing. I think it might be worth like a lot of people working their albums more. Yeah. Because I don't know, like, I don't know, like without a platform for music videos, I'm personally disconnected from a lot of the music unless I care about you already. And yeah. it's, it's hard to get me to care about a lot of new artists mm-hmm. today. So yeah, um, hey, that's a truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it, it's. Couple singles, a video, drop the album. Drop a video the day the album drops. You Maybe drop me? a video a week after, and then niggas just move like, on. Y'all are not Maybe Beyonce. Tour. Yeah. And shout out to Victoria Monet for like promoting the all right visuals. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, after the Grammy win. Mm-hmm. After, like, it's probably some people who didn't hear that song. They probably only listening to Oh My Mama. We mm-hmm. know people don't be real music fans. They only listen to the singles or what's right. on the radio. So, yeah. Yeah, let's let's keep it going. But I think it is cool that we're able to make a list like this. Like I think if you looked back, even as far as like six six years ago, like oh yeah, we we wouldn't even have ten people who we could say are are hot right now. Very true. So so I think like that's a that's a pretty cool thing in itself. Um, Will you got any any uh, thoughts that jump out to you about this list? Oh. I'm, 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 I'm actually, I actually wasn't that mad. What was that list. lie? It, because, because I was listening to what you were saying before and how you said right from the jump, the list has to be reordered. And I wasn't really that mad at the list. Mm-hmm. But now I see why I wasn't really that mad at the list. Because when they mentioned brand partnerships and stuff, that's why I was like, oh, I see why Ice Spice is at five and like Cardi B's at one and this and that. Um, but. If we're just talking about just the music. And that's all I ever talk about. Mm. If we're just talking about just the music, the list got to be a little bit different. Mm. Actually, a lot of bit different. <laughs> um, got to be a lot of bit different. Mm. Obviously, I think it should be Nikki. And then asterisk, 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 asterisk. And then we can start naming people. Because <laughs> Nikki, what she's done and the longevity, uh, how, how good her music's been, mm. just the music, I feel like that gives her like... <laughs> Five spots of just... She said, I'm number one. Y'all go argue over top four. Yeah, like, I mean, honestly, like, it should be her and then the argument, fighting this and that, and then people start naming what, like, like they think what the fuck is next. Yeah. Um, it was cool to see Flo Millie up there. Mm-hmm. It was cool to see some of these other people up there, but yeah, bro, I just, I think it's just Nikki and then everybody else is just... Fighting for what's next. Um, Do- did Do- Do- was Doja Cat? Doja was number four. Doja- okay, so she was behind Meg, Sexy Red, and Nikki. I, I mean, would put I would put Doja maybe second, and then and mm. I do like Sexy Red up there though. Mm-hmm. I do like Sexy Red up there that high. Uh, I think Sexy Red's top five. Um, I would say top five, but right not now, number two. Yeah. yeah, not number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she was in top. I would reorder it, but the list is solid. Yeah, all, it's all the right names. Yeah, it's sure. all the yeah. right names. It's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mm-hmm. I give I give Doja a lot of respect, too. I remember, I, yeah, I remember in 2020, that, like, Instagram Live where she was, like, she was talking about the racial chat rooms and all that. She's showing feet. She called everyone broke and just, <laughs> and, like, it, like public perception-wise, it looked like it was going to be very tough for her. And it was right after she had a, a major moment with um, Hot Pink, her album in 2019. <laughs> And what she did was she just shut the hell up, disappeared. And then in 2021, she came out with Planet Her, mm-hmm. which was an amazing album. That was amazing. one of my top albums of the year. Amazing. You know, uh, say, say So, Kiss Me More. I think Say So was on the, the album before that. But like, Kiss Me More, um, You Write with The Weeknd, uh, Get yes. Into It, Yeah, Juicy. Oh, like, she it, just yeah. put out good music. I've said it so many times, but like, you could be on the brink of getting canceled, but you put out some good music and niggas will overlook it. As long as you haven't done anything too heinous. 
And so she did a really good job of just they making it. <laughs> like, like she just put out really good music. And then you look at Scarlett, her album she just dropped. Again, controversy. She was she was doing very like edge lordy type stuff, wearing shirts, I think like Nazi and Hitler references and all this. And then she like shaved her hair, and some people were upset that she lost her her, her thickness, all that. But she put out a good another good album. Paint the Town Red went number one. She had a uh, Agora Hills, like Dota's been done a really good job of keeping it ab- about the music and yes. that being at the forefront of everything. And she obviously has the benefit of leaning into pop, leaning into R and B, but she can also rap her ass off. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've I've been impressed with her o- over the last several years. I think her spot at number four. So I I don't know if I'll put Sexy Red above Doja personally. That's that's probably something I, I, would, I would reorder. I I yeah I would I can't do that. Yeah, I mean. Not yet. Sometimes I turn into Dr. Uma with certain shit, but <laughs> I can't deny Doja's talent for real. Like, yeah, I she's want doing to. Some, she's doing some crazy shit on the track. I want to because yeah. I'm pro-black as hell, mm-hmm. but not nah, a girl's talented. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so not mad at this. I, it's, I'm, I'm happy with the state of, of women women in rap right now. I think we have like, if you think about all the hot records right now, yeah, Glow, Glow, Rilla. You got Get It Sexy, Sexy Red. Ice Spice is, 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 all of is, them. is on the Fisher A remix. shorter list is naming hot male songs outside of Cash, because, but there's no hot male well, songs. We got like Cash, that. Tommy Richmond. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's Kendrick, not many. Kendrick, it's not many. Future yeah. and Metro, Kendrick again. Shabuzi or whatever. Sh- Sh- Shabuzi, Tipsy is, uh, yeah. and a bar and that's all this year. I feel like they saw the tweets, like the girls are running laps around y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, shout out to like male R&B with Bryson and Party. Mm. They, they held it out. Because male R&B has been a big topic of critique for years. Um for, for me personally, and I think just in general, like the women have been really holding R&B down too. Everything. Um, but shout out to Bryson and Party for, you know, re- restoring some of our, our fortitude that we needed. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool to see this many women rappers doing their thing, like talented, you know, not just out here because of whatever, but they can actually rap. They can actually make really good music. Um, obviously, it's, it's kind of clickish. <laughs> um, but you know, it is what it is. I, I, I personally stay out of woo women's business. Like that's just not As my you business. Should. It, it, As it's, you should. it's something that I see, but it sucks because like I would love to hear a Cardi B and Ice Spice record. But Ice Spice is rocking with Nikki and we, we know we know how that goes. And like and, and, and Cardi and Ice are cool. I remember we saw them like tweeting like each other. Either. They had a picture together, so like they seem cool. But I would love to see them on a record together. And I would I'd love to see a bunch of people on this list and, and outside of it work together and you know. People are people. Um, I ain't going to hold you. I got to push back on that a little bit because a lot of people are afraid to beef and afraid to be the bad guy. Mm. Nikki got bitches wanting to be fake positive, even if they don't like their asses. Mm. Um, Women, we're naturally catty. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not convinced that all of y'all genuinely like each other like this. Oh, me neither. neither. Make a man come in the mix and you gonna see how they all fold. Like, I don't believe it and I'm not here for the remixes just to make it look cute. Like, what (laughs) happened to remixes that made sense? Mm. What happened to remixes with people that just sound well together? Like, people are doing is like, hey, you're popular right now and you're popular right now (laughs) so we should do a song together that nobody's gonna listen to again. And I had to even clock my sis Nikki for that. She did that shit with the Fuck the Club Up remix. Oh, yeah. That was, that was aggressive. That was aggressive. Like, it, it's like, do, you don't fall into that. <laughs> you don't fall into that. But were, were, like, Were you referring to a specific remix with that, with that, that comment? It's, it's so many. <laughs> there are a lot of them. It's so many. Um, like, yeah. per, like, um, like, when Lola Brooke dropped the Don't Play With It remix, mm-hmm. I expected a more New York forward remix. Mm. I thought that she would have selected other people. Um, a lot of people was like, oh, Ice Spice. Or I even think Cardi would have been fire on there. Um, but that would have been a dope for Cardi to, do, to rap I, on. Like, that would have been a moment for the culture, I feel like. But mm. I just feel like, you know, Carisha had her pod. Miami had her Carisha Please podcast. So she was super hot. Lotto, Lotto, super consistent. So they're not, they're doing things based on data versus Mm. like just what makes sense. Like they need Cookie Lion up in there (laughs) telling them like, no, y'all two get in the studio together. Like it's just not making sense anymore. 
not convinced. Yeah, it's, it's it's all business moves, and I, I get it. Like you know, you mm-hmm. want you want the most visibility. You want the it ain't hitting the though. big names, but yeah, these remixes do it come and go. It ain't hitting. These remixes so do come and go. Let's put an energy into the stuff that makes sense because what if it ain't broke? Don't fix it. Like, mm. it's just not hitting. And I also want to um, close off by saying, because it sounds like I'm a Cardi B hater. And because I'm such a big bar, mm-hmm. I want to clarify that um, Cardi B is the reason why this list even exists. Mm. Um, before her, you had to be a first lady. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikki's a first lady. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are so many female rappers for us to talk about because of Cardi. So mm-hmm. shout out to her. Yeah. Yeah. Very influential. Yeah. So... I, I do salute Billboard for the effort. I I think we all conclude right names, maybe not the right places, and the inclusion of like uh, what was it uh, visibility or partnerships or whatever like that just yeah. changes that changes everything. Like you know, I we're here to talk about the music. The business Family. exists, and we we can touch on that. But like musically, it probably would have been a bit shifted around. So for yeah. sure, for sure. Right. Shout out to women in rap. That is episode two. Oh, stay busy with Armand Sather. Make sure that you follow us on social media. I just said all the handles, but again, at Stay Busy Pod. Make sure you subscribe <laughs> to the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Stay Busy Pod for all unfiltered, fun, unhinged content. Follow us on social media at Armand Sadler, at Miss Two Bs, at William. All of the vowels in William are X's. <laughs> Simplest That's way fire. I can put it. Um, but most importantly, make sure that you stay safe, stay humble, stay busy.